Hello and welcome to America's Heartland. I'm Paul Ryan. The next time you drive by a family farm, you'll see the old barn, animals gathering around a water trough, perhaps an old tractor that's seen a lot of summers, and you will smile at the quaint images of this low-tech enterprise. But don't be fooled, inside that barn are tools and electronics of dazzling sophistication, and inside that old house, a farmer, analyzing satellite weather images on the internet. The old farm has entered the age of technology, and that's our focus today. We begin with Jason Schultz logging on in Iowa. When you think about farm work, these are likely the images that come to mind. Hardworking folks getting their hands dirty outside, working the land, corralling cattle. But in this internet age, more and more farmers are spending time at a computer keyboard. After all, farming is a business, and the men and women who work the land can't afford to fall behind on what's happening with the business of agriculture. John Walter is the director of multimedia for Successful Farming Magazine and agricultureonline.com. Farmers really have new neighbors now because of the internet. You know, they, they, they talk across the fence to people that are several states away or across the country or around the world and I think that's been a really fascinating thing to watch happen uh, because of the internet. Farmers use the internet to increase productivity and to keep up with current conditions. Indiana soybean farmer Alan Kemper says the internet has dramatically changed the way he buys farm equipment. In the past he would learn of sales through newspapers or word of mouth. Today, Alan not only looks for equipment by checking prices online, he also uses the internet to keep up on sales figures for grains that he will ultimately bring to market. Ten years ago, farmers like Alan might have to wait on the noon farm report on the AM radio dial to get caught up on commodity prices. Today, they can check them on mobile devices in the cab of their tractor. That immediate access pays off in the global marketplace. It's leveled the playing field for them. They can get the same kind of data from uh, about on the markets as a trader in Chicago can now. It's not just pork belly prices and grain futures. Sites like weather.com give farmers critical information about what to expect from Mother Nature. And the website for the USDA is a place to check on the latest farming regulations and information. And websites and forums give farmers an opportunity to talk with each other. They can go on and get advice on machinery, um, fixing how to fix a piece of equipment, how to, to uh, develop a market strategy given uh, what's happening you know, in the marketplace. Uh, there, there's a lot of problem solving that goes on um, uh, across uh, you know, borders now that, that just never existed before. And it's, it's a really a, a great thing to see. Uh, so our, our, our whole framework, our whole uh, uh, the, the, the kind of time frame of our work is, has changed dramatically. I think our, our website and others do uh, have a global perspective now and um, you know for example Midwest farmers are very attuned to what's happening in Brazil um, when uh, you know we're planting they're harvesting and vice versa so there's a lot of interest in how the crops are doing in Brazil as well as how they're doing down the road or you know, in the next state. For agriculture journalists like John Walter, the internet has changed the way they report. Deadline pressures have changed. So has the way that readers get their information. It's, there's a, there's a two-way channel here. Um, so there's an opportunity not only for us to, to push information to farmers uh, as broadcast does, but, but to, to listen to them through this medium and watch them connect with each other. So it's it's, it's kind of a many-to-many -many, uh, form of connectivity rather than one-to-many as it used to be. I can't imagine anything that's been had a more profound effect um, on, on the way we work, um, the way we relate to farmers, uh, and kind of even among ourselves here in the building. I mean, can you imagine what it was like before email. I can remember that, and uh, people made phone calls and talked to each other face to face. While many farmers have jumped on the broadband wagon, overall rural internet use still lags behind suburban and urban areas. An older population less inclined to log on, and fewer choices for broadband service providers are the reasons. This whole business of getting uh, the internet that last mile, 
out to, to farmers. Um, it's still happening. There are a lot of we know there's still a lot of our readers who are still on dial-up or don't have, you know, an internet connection at all. And that's that's um, uh, but that's changed dramatically. Of course, it will never replace the plow or the combine, but the internet is proving to be one of agriculture's newest and most important tools.